Amazon Sidewalk is live. Opt out now. The CFAA gets some clarification thanks to the Supreme Court, and Revol beefs up attacks on supply chains. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for June 8th, 2021. This is your weekly summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. We have a bunch of security ransomware going on and some legislation, so let's go ahead and get right into it with Amazon Sidewalk. Happy Amazon Tuesday, everyone. Starting today, Amazon is introducing their new Amazon Sidewalk service. It allows for your Echo or your Ring devices to be used to share internet with your neighbors. Since that also means that your bandwidth as well as your home internet connection will also be shared with neighbors, that raises a whole slew of concerns. Amazon announced this originally a while back, but Amazon Sidewalk basically treats Echo and Ring devices as bridges, which are used to create a network of low bandwidth wireless devices. Your Echo or your Ring would allow for a small portion of your network bandwidth to be shared with a pool of other devices, and that internet connection is only accessible by other compatible Amazon Sidewalk devices. So currently it's compatible on a long list of Echo and Ring devices including the Spotlight Cam Wired, Echo Dots and Echoes, Echo Shows, and a few more. So if your internet goes down, the theory is your Ring or Echo devices will remain up with this sidewalk network, and it will also help with finding things like tile trackers, which is one of their approved third parties, like if you put one on your pet and your pet gets out. In this case, your neighbors could choose to turn on a feature which is called community finding, which will share the approximate location of their device, not just the bandwidth. It's totally free of charge to customers as well. The max bandwidth shared is 500 megs per month and 80 kilobits per second at a time, so it's definitely minimal, but even when it's just a small amount of data, it's still an area of concern for folks who have data caps and for privacy. Amazon states that the data shared across Sidewalk is encrypted, and Amazon does not have the ability to decrypt this information, and they also state the data is anonymized. But that still brings up countless questions about the encryption itself, how it's transmitted, data at rest and storage security, how the data is sanitized and anonymized, etc, etc, etc. I could go on. Amazon released a white paper about Sidewalk answering a lot of these questions, and it does state that endpoint users will not have access to gateway information, and the network server rolls or changes transmission IDs and Sidewalk gateway IDs every 15 minutes to prevent tracking or association of devices to users. They also make mention to the use of ephemeral elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key agreement handshakes. Now, the white paper does include a lot of positives in terms of security, but under their Q&A section, they also point out that just like any other Wi-Fi devices, you can still look at signal strength to triangulate the location of these devices on the sidewalk network. At launch, there will not be any third-party apps except for a few, including Tile, running on sidewalk, but Amazon is open to the idea of and intends to release terms of service for third-party developers. Amazon will be running Sidewalk on their own new Wi-Fi protocol, which is using the 900 megahertz spectrum. Supposedly, this will increase the Wi-Fi signal range, but any new protocols could also come with new vulnerabilities, especially wireless ones. But a big, big red flag with Amazon Sidewalk, it's opt out. Yes, it opts you in automatically. All users with compatible devices will be opted in already. You have to go into the Amazon ALEXA or the Ring app to opt out. And to do so, all you have to do is open that ALEXA app, just in case any of y'all have them out there, click more at the bottom right hand side, click settings, account settings, Amazon sidewalk, and switch the toggle to disabled, then close. Now in the Ring app, it's a little bit easier. You tap the sandwich icon, that's the three line menu button, click control center, then Amazon sidewalk, and then switch that toggle to disabled and then close. 
So do the benefits outweigh the cons? Even though I don't have Amazon devices in my household, it is something that I will tell my family to opt out of. I would rather they be late adopters to this tech so information security professionals have a little bit more time to do some war walking and find out more about this network. Ethical hacking just got a big win after being very concerned about the outcome of an important case for a very long time now. A former Georgia police sergeant named Nathan Van Buren accessed a police database to get information on a license plate. In exchange for this information, he was paid personally $6,000 USD in cash. Van Buren used the computer in his police vehicle to access Georgia's Crime Information Center. Van Buren was a cop, so he used his own credentials to access th this information, but it had nothing to do with any ongoing investigations or duties that he had to perform as a cop. So he was using his power for personal gain. The person who wanted the information from him had previous ties to criminal activity and they paid him the cash. So the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Georgia convicted him for violating policy by obtaining information for personal use and violating CFAA by using a PC on that network for something other than his duties as a police officer. And he got 18 months. This was appealed and eventually made it to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court ruled that his actions did not violate CFAA, which is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986, in a six to three decision. The Supreme Court decided that because he used his own credentials, that would not be within the scope of violating CFAA. The dissenters to this were Chief Justice Clarence Thomas, Justice Samuel Alito, and Justice John Roberts. The reason why this was lauded as a win by the EFF and ethical hackers is because the CFAA is incredibly broad and it could be misinterpreted. This ruling affirms that services cannot invoke it because you use their service to, for example, collect evidence on security vulnerabilities. So this ruling could be used as future precedent for future cases whenever security researchers are taken to court over ethical hacking. Big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and as always for the support. And a quick shout out to Harley for joining the Threatwire Alliance and as always for supporting the show. Thank you so much. Patreon exclusive merchandise was just unlocked last month as a new perk for the Threatwire Alliance. So now's a great time to join the team as you will get the first round of art designs for this year, for 2021. Check the Patreon page for more details and do not forget patrons also also get exclusive access to an audio only podcast version of this show instead of just the video version, which is public. On to the third news story. Another week, another ransomware attack against a supply chain. Ah, uh, yes, it's basically the inevitable this year. The world's largest meat producer, JBS, had to halt operations in some locations in the US, Canada, and Australia due to being targeted in a cyber attack, affecting servers at their North American and Australian IT operations. All five of JBS's biggest plants in the US had to stop processing, along with plants in Brooks, Alberta, Canada. So their Canadian plant processes about a third of Canada's beef, while the US plants process about a fourth of American supply of beef. JBS stated that they do have backup servers and those are not affected, so it should get back to production as soon as possible. They also mentioned that no customer or employee data was compromised and an investigation is currently ongoing. As of June 4th, just a few days ago, JBS is fully operational again, sooner than expected due to the fact that their backup servers were not compromised. They prioritize production critical systems in order to not affect the food supply chain. Deputy Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre stated that this was a ransomware attack and they did receive a ransom demand, though we don't know the total, and the attack likely stemmed from a group in Russia. The FBI later announced that Revil was the group behind this attack. So Revil, aka Sodino Kibi, Guys, can we just stick to one name for these groups? Because there's so many, it's getting confusing. Well, they started up in April of 2019, and they were also likely behind the ransomware attack on Fujifilm, which 
which also just happened recently. We do not currently know how Revil was able to plant ransomware, nor how much they asked for. We also don't know if JBS paid the ransom, though it's probably not likely given they were able to get back up and running with their backups, although if they didn't want the attackers to leak the data, maybe then they would have paid up. We don't know. Given the swift action though taken by JBS, your summer barbecues are likely not going to be affected. You should be just fine for July 4th. This week on Morse Code, I am starting my series all about finishing an unfinished basement and turning it into a YouTube studio. I've been looking forward to this for years. This is so exciting. I will be running 10 gig ethernet all throughout the basement. I'm building my very first networking rack all by myself. I'm super excited about that too. It's like, it's a decent size. It's 15 U, so it's a little baby one, but it's my first little baby rack. I'm so excited. Subscribe to my channel, youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for more of that kind of content. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel as well because we just hit 700,000 subscribers and I am just overwhelmed with the kind words that y'all have been sending to the entire team, myself included. So thank you so much for the support. As always, it's always appreciated. I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you on the internet.